you by uh, tech for dummies i'm here uh, to uh, tell you about how to install uh, active directory role on the windows server uh, to make a domain controller so as of now i don't have any forest so this will become my first dc in my forest and this will be the root pdc and also uh, it is uh, the first domain in the forest okay so let's begin so this is uh, the windows server uh, let me start up So here uh, I'm going to install uh, the Active Directory domain services role uh, on the server. So I have installed uh, the Oracle VM uh, virtual box uh, on my PC and I have downloaded the uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 iOS uh, from Technical Evaluation Center. Uh, I'll be sharing you the link from where you can download this Oracle VM virtual box as well as the uh, evaluation uh, MS uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 ISO. Okay, so this is our server manager. So you can just check over here. This server is not a joined to any domain. It's in currently work group. You can see over here. And my computer name is uh, this one. And uh, so let's start. So this is our dashboard. So from here uh, to install the Active Directory domain services role on the server, just click on add roles and features. Okay. So let's begin. So this is the wizard, first wizard, which will uh, show up when you click on add roles, just click on next. So we are uh, adding a role based or a feature based installation. So if you want to add any remote desktop services installation, you can just select this one. Uh, right now I'm adding a role. So I'll go ahead with the first option. Just click on next. So then over here, we need to select the server pool. Like if suppose this, uh, we have uh, multiple servers over here, it will show uh, the which on which server you would like to install the uh, role. So right now I have only one server. So I'm selecting this one. So it is automatically selected. So I'm clicking on next. So it will, it will show up the wizard of add roles and features. So from here, we need to select active directory domain services. So this is the role which we need to install. So when we install this active directory uh, domain services role, these are the following uh, features or the row services which will also get installed automatically by installing the Active Directory Domain Services role, okay? So let's click on add features. So features has been added. And we also need, uh, need to have the DNS server for name to IP and IP to name resolution. So we will click on add, add DNS and we will add the respective DNS futures. Okay, click on continue. Then uh, that's it. Uh, we can proceed, click on next. So here, uh, whenever, just make sure whenever you are trying to install the Active Directory Domain Services, this .NET Framework 4.5 should be selected. It, it is basically automatically selected, but without, uh, selecting i mean if it is not selected or you have unchecked it your role will not be installed okay because this is the basic uh, feature which actually uh, makes the active directory domain services role to be installed on the server okay so just keep as it is so here are the other features like group policy management in my coming videos i'll let you know about what is group policy and how we apply group policy uh, so that's it so we can just click on next and it will uh, it will just uh, ask you to just make sure everything whatever you have selected previously is the right one or not just click on next now and this is for the dns uh, what is dns and why you need to use dns so this is the basic information which is written over here so click on next 
So just here, it will ask you to restart this destination server automatically if required. So just click on check mark. So click on yes. So just click on install now, right now. So the role is getting installed right now. Once the role is installed, we can uh, promote this server as a domain controller. Okay. And I'll show you uh, once this uh, role gets installed. Okay. So just uh, bear with me a few moments. So it should not take more than five uh, minutes. So let's just uh, check uh, once it is done. Uh, we can just uh, proceed with a uh, further promotion of your uh, promotion of our domain controller. Okay. So it's getting installed right now. Uh, and also, uh, this is the computer name which is showing right now. So if you want, uh, it actually I have just kept this by default after installing the Windows Server on my virtual box. If you want, you can just uh, edit the computer name as well. Uh, by going to the server manager, uh, click on local servers and you will have an option uh, over here, computer name, click on computer name. It will ask uh, you to change the computer name. So it's up to you, whatever computer name you would like to give, you can give it, uh, it's up to you, okay? So now the role is installed. You can see configuration required, installation succeeded on this one because we have installed this role on this particular machine. That's the re uh, reason it's showing this uh, particular machine name. Uh, click on close. So over here you can notice there is one notification. So let's see what is the notification uh, we are getting right now. Oh, great. So it is asking us to promote the server as a domain controller. So we are on right track right now. So before promoting a domain controller, we need to make sure that as we are making our domain, con it's uh, making this particular server as a domain controller, make sure most probably the domain controllers have a static IP address. If you have a dynamic host configuration protocol, which is nothing but a DHCP server by using the Mac binding, I like a reservation, uh, you can uh, bind that particular IP address to this particular server because DHCP usually change the IP address after eight days. So if you don't have DHCP server in your environment, make sure you give the IP address static. So let's do it right now. So just click on network adapter, open network and settings, change adapter, click on properties, an IPv4 address, obtain the IP address 10.10.1. So leave the default uh, subnet mask as it is a class A sub uh, IP address. Uh, it has taken the uh, class A subnet mask and the DNS server as we don't have any DNS server right now. So this is only our DNS server. So just um, point the same IP address to our, D, uh, in, in our preferred DNS server. Okay, done. So alternate DNS server, uh, we can keep the alternate DNS server if we have any other DNS server. If not, we can just uh, point it to self uh, like by using the uh, uh, IP address 127.0.0.1, which is also known as loopback IP address. So prefer not to keep the alternate address, uh, alternate DNS server right now. So we'll just click on okay, click on okay. So done. So it's done right now. So we have provided the static IP address. So just click on this notification box right now and click promote this domain controller. So over here we have uh, deployment options like three. So add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a domain to an existing forest, add a new forest. So as I said, starting, we don't have any domain controller in your in our environment. We don't have any forest. We don't have any domain. So we are promoting this particular server as uh, in a new forest. So first we need to create a forest. So let's go ahead with add a new forest. Let's say if you have already a forest, you would like to add an exist, add a, a domain controller to an existing domain. 
add a domain controller to an existing domain is nothing but we we are basically adding a additional domain controller in that particular domain okay so add a new domain to an existing forest is nothing but we have a forest a and that is only our uh, domain a and now we would like to add a new domain with a name called domain b then we will select add a new domain to the existing forest so here we have two options in the add a new domain to an existing forest we have two options like it's an uh, tree domain or a child domain so if you click on child domain then it will become your child domain controller okay so right now we will just click on this add new forest then we will give the forest name as tech tube okay tech tube then we will click on next so see here we got verification of forest name field the dns tech tube pro proposed to be active directory domain control so here here we need to mention like dot com as well we need to provide the uh, second level uh, sorry top level domain name as well we can use dot local or dot in or dot gov or dot org anything so now click on next see uh, it is taking right now because we cannot add a single label domain we need to uh, make it multi label domain that's the reason we have added two let's see for the dns tech tube proposal requirements a single label domain dns name should be unique and fully qualified instead of one of more labels separated by a period followed by a top level domain okay that was the error i showed you the error message because i have entered first the tech tube only so there is no top level domain included in tech tube so uh, after that i have entered techtube.com it took right now so here we have domain controller options here it is asking you to select the forest functional level and domain functional level so right now just leave it as um, uh, by default uh, windows server 2012 r2 as our windows server version is windows 1 2012 r2 and domain functional is also the same i'll explain you briefly about the forest functional level and the domain functional in the next stop uh, in the next video okay so let's uh, leave it as default right now so next we have specified domain controller capabilities so uh, domain uh, name system dns server as you have selected the dns and also it is a global catalog server so nowadays all the servers are a global catalog servers and also i just wanted to let you know that whatever the domain uh, controller uh, you are uh, promoting uh, a windows server as a domain controller the first server in a domain or in a forest will have a gc role by default we cannot uncheck it let's say if you are adding an additional domain controller we have an option to uncheck the global catalog and also we can also uncheck the domain name system server and also the third option which is read only domain controller it will also get highlighted if there is any domain in that but uh, 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 if there is any uh, domain controller in that particular domain as of now we don't have any domain we don't have any forest that's the reason that particular three options are grayed out right now okay so here type the directory services restored mode password so directory service restore pass so restore mode password is also nothing but dsrm we need to make sure the password whatever you are providing here we need to make sure we remember it because this particular password is used when you want to recover your domain control okay and also uh, dsrm is nothing but logging into a windows server in a safe mode same as it is we log into our windows uh, 10 machines or windows 7 or windows 8 machines as in safe mode we have a particular restore mode like the same safe mode in our domain controller okay so let's provide the password over here so, okay okay the password is done right now so just click on next so you can see over here uh, it's just uh, showing you a warning 
as we are uh, we don't have any dns server right now okay so once we promote uh, we will also have this particular option uh, i mean it, we can uncheck or check by defaultly it will be unchecked because we don't have any uh, dns server so just click on next so it is here uh, it's actually verifying your netbios name assigned to this domain and change it if necessary. So it will show one uh, NetBIOS domain name over here, which is our tech tube, which we have mentioned. If you want, you can change your NetBIOS uh, name over here, but it's uh, by default to you, you can keep it uh, as it is, okay? Just click on next. So in the next, it will uh, show you uh, the uh, directories uh, where the database file is stored and log files and this is wall folder so in my first session i mentioned that the database uh, name uh, which is, i mean the database file name uh, which is stored for for on a domain controller is called as ntds so this is the this is the location of ntds okay this is the database file where all the information of your domain would be stored i mean of that particular domain controller will be stored and these are the log files folder this is also same. Uh, we have multiple log files. I'll show you once it gets installed, okay? And syswall folder, this is a syswall folder, which is particularly used for applying our uh, group policies. So I'll, I'll also show you this syswall folder once this domain controller gets, once this server gets promoted as a domain controller, okay? So next, click on next. So over here, you can see we have, we got one view script option, okay? So you can just click on view script. If you want, you can copy this script and just uh, open a uh, note. Okay, just copy this script. You can save it or save, click on save as and click on desktop or anything, wherever you want and save this script. I'll, I'll tell you later why we are saving this script right now. Le okay, so I have saved this script. Just right now next we will go ahead and click on next before proceeding next just make sure the options which you have selected are the right one so it's showing this one so next click on next so it will uh it is a policy management okay so it's up to us if you want to install that particular role with the active directory domain services role or not okay so it's now configuring the DNS service on this particular computer to make this particular domain controller as our domain, uh, DNS server as well, okay? So let's see here. It's showing as you are about to sign out. The computer has been restarted because the Active Directory domain services were installed or remote. So make, uh, this happens whenever you install a role or whenever you uninstall a role, okay? So let's wait for some time the machine is getting restarted right now so perfect i guess it's restarted now it's taking time i guess my laptop is a little bit slow sorry guys for waiting for you long time just wait for some more time it will be done Perfect. Oh, I should please wait screen right now. Hopefully it should be done quickly. Okay. And uh, guys, uh, also I'll explain you about how to configure your Oracle VMware virtual box so that even you can also try at a home in your laptop. So that will be good so that you will learn something by doing it because it's easy to get the uh, Microsoft uh, iOS of any Windows server from the Microsoft Evaluation website, TechNet website, and Oracle VMware VirtualBox is free to use tool, and it doesn't take much space as well on your computer hard drive. It's, I guess it's about 
not more than 5 MB or 6 MB. But for install, I mean, for downloading the OS, uh, you need to have some good internet speed because it's around 3.35 GB. So if you have a good internet connection, you can easily download that file. If not, you may have to wait for a longer time. Okay. So let's just wait for some time. So hopefully it should be done. Wow. It's getting configured. Oh, perfect. So this security policies to the system are getting applied now. Perfect. It's done right now. Click on on screen key. Then delete. Where is delete? I forgot. Okay, delete. Nice then over here. If you notice over here, it's showing our domain name and the administrator username. Okay, just click, may enter your administrator password. So let's take you now. Let's me enter you. Perfect. I have entered the right password right now. Perfect. So the server. I mean, the domain controller is, I mean, the server is right now a domain controller. So let's see how do you usually know whether this particular server is a domain controller or not. So how can you verify it? this one? This is the basic step you can do. Uh, so just open the server manager and I'll maximize it. Just click on local server. You can see the computer name. This is the computer name and you can see the domain name as techtube.com. So if this is a domain controller or if this machine is added to a domain as a uh, what we call a domain the member member server member server is nothing but like we add windows 10 uh, to a domain or windows 8 to the domain is nothing but it's a member server so this particular server is uh, in this particular domain which is called techtube.com okay and we have public firewall remote management etc etc and we have all services these are the services uh, uh, this is the ADDS role. Okay, so let's uh, verify. Uh, how can we verify whether this particular server is a domain controller or not? So for that, you will see over here a ADDS role, and with this, we have a list of servers in this particular domain, whether um, it's a domain controller or not. Okay, and also what you can do is you can just open this one and enter the command nl test slash dc list then colon enter perfect now you can see this is this is the nl test dc list command it will show you whether this particular server is a domain controller or not and if it is a domain controller what is the role installed in it so you can see over here this is the domain controller name and this is this is having a pdc role in it okay and the site is default first name site over here the command completed successfully this means this is a particularly a domain controller so now we will move on to the next step which is called which we we will open right now is active directory uh, users and computers dialog okay so for that we have multiple ways to open it. So from PowerShell, you can type dsa.mse. So once you enter that, this wizard will be open. If you want to open this from the graphical user interface, you can do it that way as well. So that for that, you can just uh, click on the server manager, then click on tools. Over here, you have Active Directory users and computers. From here also, you can open it, okay? So the same dialog box or the wizard will be open. So right now you can see, or if you uh, expand this one, you can see this active directory users and computer, this dialog box has opened on this particular server. That's the reason it's showing the server name, okay? So let's say if you have multiple domain controllers in your environment, then it might uh, show you a different uh, server name over here. So if you want, you can change, um, a domain 
from here, uh, like if you have any other domain apart from techtube.com in your environment, if you want to change the domain controller, if you want, if you want to open the site today to users and computers uh, by pointing it to the other domain controller, you can do it that way as well. Uh, but as of now, as I don't have any other domain controller in this domain, uh, I cannot do it, okay? Uh, because uh, over here you will get the list of domain controllers. So you need to just click on select this one and click on okay. On this particular server, the accurate users and computer dialog box will be opened, okay? So if you just expand this one, uh, this is our domain which is called techtube.com, and we have this one built in computers, domain controllers. Uh, foreign security principles, managed service account, and this is users. So built-in is nothing but uh, we have uh, in this built-in, we have uh, built-in security groups. So these are by default groups, which are automatically enrolled on this particular domain controller, okay? We no need to do anything on this particular uh, built-in groups. So these are the computers. For example, let's say if you have any client mission, um in a uh, client machine and if you have joined that machine to this particular domain like techtube.com that particular computer name will be shown over here in this computer uh container so how do you uh, know whether it's a container or it's an ou so it's a basically a basic difference over here is let me open this snipping uh we don't have over here right now. So let's do it. Okay, over here. So uh, how to basically understand whether it's a container or an OU. So you can see computers in this particular, you have only one folder. But if you notice in the domain controller, we have folder and we have one subfolder icon as well, which is nothing but it's an OU, which doesn't have a subfolder icon in it it's a container so i will explain you the difference between the container and an ou in my next video okay so you, over here you can see this is this is a by default ou in, in a domain controller okay so if you click on the domain controller you will get the domain controller whether uh, if you have multiple domain controllers in this particular domain you will get all the domain controllers name and which uh, DC type, whether it's a global catalog server or if it is not a global catalog server, if it is a RODC, you will get a RODC in the DC type. And if you have multiple sites in your domain, uh, you will get the multiple site names over here. Okay. So if you want, you can set the description as well over here. And this is also one way to verify whether this particular server uh, is promoted as a domain control or not. Okay. So this is the best way. Basically, instead of running the command, you can just go ahead and uh, check by using a graphical user interface. Uh, but uh, command makes the work very easier as you know. Okay. And this is users. So basically this is also a container and we have by default users over here and by default security groups over here. Okay. So if you want, uh, so this is, this was the overall video, which I would like to explain you today. So hope you have liked this video. Uh, and also you will watch this video completely and make sure uh, to share as much as possible so that our channel gets our viewers and hopefully uh, we need uh, more viewers on our channel and hopefully I would like to bring more content on the Active Directory. So in my coming videos, uh, you will get to know about more about Active Directory and also please subscribe my channel and like my channel. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Take care and stay safe.